M3 MacBook Air or M3 MacBook Pro. Which one should you go for if you're looking to buy a brand new MacBook in 2024? Well, if you're looking for the most affordable option, the Air starts from $1,100 as opposed to $1,600 for the MacBook Pro. However, the MacBook Pro comes with double the storage as well as two extra GPU cores. And if you configure the Air the same, the price difference goes down to $300. So is it worth spending $300 for the MacBook Pro? Well, let's take a look at all the differences from the design to the display all the way down down to performance and battery life right after this. This video is sponsored by Jackery and their Mini Explorer 100 Plus Solar Generator. More about it later in the video. Starting off with the design, I much prefer the Air here. It is not only noticeably lighter than the Pro, but also significantly thinner. I've traveled with both and I'm always shocked by how thin and light the MacBook Air feels. It's literally like I'm only carrying an iPad with me. There were also so many cases where I just grabbed the Air in one hand and started using it like this. That just wasn't the same with the MacBook Pro, which is much heavier and feels more of like a portable workstation. And I know that this is probably a small thing, but it looks to me that when Apple designed this new generation of MacBooks with the round the frame design, they designed them with the MacBook Air in mind first. And that's because if you take a look at the ports, you'll see that a MacBook Air has them right in the middle of the chassis. Whereas on the MacBook Pro, these are off center, which has always looked very off to me. Speaking of the ports, this is where the MacBook Pro shines, as it comes with two extra ports, an HDMI and an SD card slot, aside from the two Thunderbolts plus MagSafe. Personally, I only use USB-C monitors, so I don't really need HDMI. However, there were numerous cases where I was traveling, I had my camera with me, and I wanted to quickly transfer some footage. So having that SD card slot on the MacBook Pro was incredibly handy. One more design difference is that the M3 MacBook Pro only comes in silver and space gray. Now, there is also a new black color, but for that, you need to upgrade to the more expensive M3 Pro chip. The M3 Air, on the other hand, comes in silver and space gray too, but you've also got gold and midnight. Midnight is definitely my favorite, and this year, Apple gave it an anti-fingerprint coating so that it would stand smudges and fingerprints a bit better than the previous midnight M2 model. I should mention that if you're looking for the most durable color, you should go with silver. Space Gray and Midnight are much more susceptible to chipping and scuffing. And while the keyboard feels the same on both, uh, the MacBook Pro has this black background, whereas with the Air, the background will always match the color of your MacBook. When it comes to the display, the biggest difference is that we've got a traditional LCD display on the Air as opposed to a mini LED on the MacBook Pro. Now, mini LED is still LCD technology, but with a ton of dimming zones, which allow portions of the display to go super bright or super dark. Now, in everyday use, I haven't really noticed any difference between the two. But the moment I turn the lights off and I want to watch a movie, the difference becomes staggering. The blacks on the Air will look gray, whereas on the MacBook Pro, these these will be inky black. And the brightness of some scenes is also significantly higher on the MacBook Pro. Like honestly, the MacBook Pro is one of the best laptops to watch movies on. Now, aside from the mini LED versus LCD advantage, the Pro also has that 120Hz refresh rate as opposed to 60 on the Air. So if you do any gaming, that 120Hz will make a big difference. I don't really game on my MacBook, so for me, the main advantage is seeing all the macOS animations at 120fps on the MacBook Pro. And this truly makes the MacBook Pro feel much snappier than the MacBook Air. Another advantage of the MacBook Pro is its brightness. Thanks to the fact that it's mini LED, whenever you're watching an HDR video or working with HDR content in Final Cut Pro, the MacBook can bump portions of its display to 1600 nits. That is more than three times higher than the MacBook Air, which maxes out at 500 nits. When you're using the MacBooks normally in non-HDR content, the MacBook Pro can go up to 600, so still 100 nits brighter than the Air. I've used both outdoors and I can definitely tell that the MacBook Pro is brighter and easier to see. Now, the cool thing about a Pro is that if you use an app like Vivid, you can even force the display to output HDR content all the time, maintaining a brightness of 1000 nits, which is double of that of the air. This does kill the battery life quite quickly, but if you're outdoors and you just need to do some really quick work for 30 minutes to an hour, this is actually an amazing feature to have. Another thing that you should know about their displays is that the MacBook Pro not only has a larger display with thinner bezels, but it also has a higher resolution at 3K as opposed to 2.5K. This means that the resolution scaling is 
quite a bit higher on the MacBook Pro. So you do get to see more content. I have found this quite useful when I was working with large Excel sheets and I wasn't at my desk with my dual monitors connected or when I was web browsing on the go. And speaking of the displays, the M3 MacBook Air can now drive two external displays but only when the lid is closed. So you will need to have an external mouse and keyboard. The M3 MacBook Pro will get a software update soon to allow for dual displays too. So if you do want to connect more monitors, you need to go for an M3 Pro or M3 Max MacBook Pro, which can do two or four displays, including the MacBook's own screen. And speaking of plugging a lot of things in, that's where our sponsor Jackery comes in. Jackery's Mini Explorer 100 Plus is the first solar generator that you can take on flights and trains. At 99 watt hours and offering two USB-C ports and one USB-A, at a maximum output of 128 watts, you can charge multiple devices at the same time on the go. You also get this handy display which shows you the input from mains or solar, including your Jackery's battery level and its output. And weighing under a kilogram, its compact size really makes a difference when you compare it to its older and heavier siblings. And this tiny power station is also built to last, rated for 2000 charge cycles using LFP and NCM batteries, and also offers six forms of protection, meaning that you have the peace of mind to take it anywhere you go. And aiming to make green energy more accessible, Jackery is launching a variety of amazing deals on a wide range of power stations and solar panels. Check out Jackery by using the link below. And now, back to the video, let's talk about the camera and the microphones. Both feature a 1080p camera. However, the MacBook Pro features superior microphones, which Apple calls studio quality. Okay, this is a camera and a microphone test on the M3 MacBook Pro. And this is a camera and a microphone test on the new M3 MacBook Air. When it comes to the speakers, the speakers on the Air are okay, but they are hidden underneath the keyboard. So they do sound a bit quiet and also lack punch. So here's a quick test, although you can only tell the real difference when you hear them both in person. So yeah, as you could hear, the speaker difference is just night and day. Which brings us to the performance. We've got the exact same configurations on both here. So 8 gigs of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. And even though they both come with the latest Apple M3 chip, the MacBook Pro has two big advantages. The first is that it can draw more power compared to the MacBook Air. And the second is that a MacBook Pro has a fan to cool down the M3 chip, whereas the Air cools itself down by throttling its performance. To see how much it throttles, we ran Cinebench for 10 minutes. And what was really interesting here was that after the first five minutes, the Air was the one that was running much cooler at 73 degrees as opposed to 84 on the MacBook Pro. However, that was because it throttled. Its average clock speed over a period of 10 minutes was 2.7 GHz as opposed to 3.6 on the MacBook Pro. And it was also drawing much less power, 11 watts as opposed to 21. After the test completed, there was, as expected, a significant performance difference between the two, with the MacBook Pro being 36% faster. The MacBook Pro did lose more battery here at 9% compared to 4 on the Air though. So if you're pushing these machines heavily, the MacBook Pro is able to sustain that performance thanks to its fan. We've also tested the disk speed to see if we get any differences between them, despite them both having the same 512GB capacity. And here, the MacBook Pro was slightly faster by about 200 megabytes per second for the read speed and about 30 for the write. So what about some more real-world tests now? Well, in Blender, we rendered the classroom scene using the Cycle CPU render, and here the Air finished in 9 minutes and 17 seconds as opposed to 8 minutes and 6 seconds on the MacBook Pro. So the Pro was faster, but only by about 12.75% here. Interesting enough, they both lost exactly 7% battery life here. We've then rendered the same scene, but this time using the GPU. And here, 
both were dramatically faster, with the Air finishing in just 2 minutes and 21 seconds, and the Pro actually being slower by 4 seconds and also losing 1% more battery life. We then tested Lightroom, which is probably my most used Pro app on my MacBook Air. And here, we've imported 228 images of various resolutions and formats on both, some even being as high res as 80 megapixels. And this was surprisingly 6 seconds faster on the MacBook Air, or 15% faster. We've then applied some filters and effects on one of the images, and then pasted those effects to all the other images. And here, they both took exactly 1 minute and 13 seconds. Then we exported all of these images in full quality, and this is where we saw the biggest difference. The MacBook Air took 17 minutes and 47 seconds, while the MacBook Pro only took 13 minutes and 26 seconds, or 25% faster. And here, just because the Air ran the export for much longer, it did also lose more battery, losing 6% instead of 4. We then re-exported these images, only this time in a compressed JPEG small size. And this time, the Air finished in 6 minutes and 55 seconds, as opposed to 5 minutes and 18 seconds on the MacBook Pro, which is 23% faster. Although, the battery percentage loss was the same here at 4%. So if you're working in Lightroom and you do some large exports, the Pro will be about 20-25% faster, so pretty big difference here. Then we tested Final Cut Pro, and this is where things got weird. We've loaded our usual S21 Ultra versus Pixel 6 Pro camera comparison project, which is one of our most complex projects yet. 15 minutes long in 4K with loads of titles, effects, as well as picture-in-picture -picture 4K clips. Now, exporting this took a staggering 43 minutes and 43 seconds on the MacBook Air. What's surprising here is that the M3 MacBook Pro completely failed to export this. It kept on crashing, and this was the exact same behavior back in November when we first tested the M3 MacBook Pro. This, by the way, is a fresh new unit. Apple has actually reached out to me after our M3 MacBook Pro review, and they've asked for some log files, libraries, and assets in order to fix the issue. We haven't tested the M3 MacBook Pro since, so we assumed that hopefully they had released a fix, but it turns out that they haven't. I do find it extremely odd how the MacBook Air with the same chip, same amount of RAM, and same amount of storage was able to export this project just fine, but the MacBook Pro wasn't. And by the way, this is not an issue related to our specific project only. Final Cut keeps on crashing the moment you give it any more complex projects, at least on the space 8GB of RAM MacBook Pro model. Now, because we still wanted to give you guys some Final Cut Pro numbers, we've also made this much simpler project. So this is a 20 minute 4K timeline, but it's a very basic one, like we literally just have a few shots here, concepts, and then fading between them, that's it. This took 13 minutes on the Air, and 12 minutes and 57 seconds on the Pro, so basically the same, with both losing only 4% battery life. Now, of course, timeline performance is oftentimes more important than export times, and here, they were both flawless in this simple project. This timeline was very easy to scrub and skip. However, when it came to the more complex projects, the timeline was quite a bit laggier, with the system even freezing in the case of the MacBook Pro. Surprisingly, the Air did better here, by being slightly more fluid, which I was not expecting. All in all, the timeline performance was pretty good, I'd say, considering that these were both the base models. But because of the constant Final Cut Pro issues on the base 8GB of RAM MacBook Pro, I just cannot recommend it for Final Cut, at least not yet. And then, as some of you do like to do some casual gaming on your Macs, we've also ran some games. We started with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which runs through Rosetta, but it is still very well optimized. We ran its benchmark at 2560 by 1600 resolution at the highest preset, and got an average of 20 FPS on the MacBook Pro as opposed to 16 on the Air, with the Air dropping 4% battery while the Pro dropped 3%. That is 25% higher performance when gaming on the MacBook Pro. We then tested Resident Evil Village, which runs natively on Apple Silicon, and it is one of the most optimized games that you can get. And at a 1920 by 1200 resolution, with a quality set to 2 and everything else on low, including metal effects turned off, they were both at exactly 34 FPS. However, after only 2 minutes, the air started throttling. And after 5 minutes, the air had already dropped to 27 FPS, a massive 20% performance drop, while the Pro remained the same at 34. 
After 10 minutes, the Pro dropped to 33, only losing 3% performance, while the Air sustained around 27 FPS. What this means is that the initial performance between the two is actually quite similar, but the Air starts throttling heavily after just a few minutes. And if you can find a way to keep the Air from throttling, such as by installing thermal pads or an external fan, like we tested in our M2 Air coverage last year, you can actually get a similar level of performance to the MacBook Pro. Which brings us to the battery life. You've of course seen the individual battery numbers for each of the tests that we've run. But if you're planning on using these on the go, how many hours of battery should you expect from them? Well, Apple claims that a MacBook Pro can get you through 22 hours of Apple TV movie playback as opposed to 18 on the MacBook Air. We can't really show you Apple TV content due to copyright issues, so we looked one of our own videos until the MacBooks died. And here, the MacBook Air lasted for 17 hours and 3 minutes, while the MacBook Pro lasted for 19 hours and 16 minutes. Not quite the 18 and 22 hour battery claim that Apple is making, but still very impressive. So if you're traveling for a long day, you shouldn't need to charge them at all, unless you're doing some really heavy work. Speaking of charging, both support fast charging, up to 50% in just 30 minutes here. However, while the MacBook Pro comes with a fast charger by default, the base 256 Air does not. Only the 512 model does. And if you've loved the wallpapers that you've seen on our MacBooks throughout this video, they were all part of the Heroic Heroes pack that we've launched on Friday for our app wallpapers. And today we are launching our sixth new pack for March called Kitty Kingdom. Yes, you guys really loved our Poppy Paradise pack from November, and now our designer, Indra Mousley, is back with another pet pack. This time featuring 10 iconic cat breeds. All 10 designs are handmade, and they look absolutely incredible. Like, the quality of each design is absolutely incredible. Just take a look at this. So, if you're a cat lover, I think you're absolutely going to love this pack. To find it, simply download our app wallpapers from the App Store or the Play Store, and then look for Kitty Kingdom as part of our March releases. So having said all of this, which one should you go for? Well, personally, I suggest that if you're looking at buying these brand new, you should definitely go for the MacBook Air. If you configure them the same, you are saving $300, and while you do get much better sustained performance on the MacBook Pro with a significantly superior display and speakers, I just think that the extra performance improvements are just not enough for Pro users. If you are a Pro user, you should look at a refurbished M2 Pro MacBook Pro. That retails for the same $1,600 price as the M3 model, and it gives you 16 gigabytes of RAM, with even better performance and Pro apps, and you also get one extra Thunderbolt port, and you can use two displays while keeping your MacBook's display on two. So that's the one that I would go for if I am a pro user. For everyone else, I think the M3 MacBook Air is an incredible choice and really the perfect blend of portability, battery life, and performance. But let me know, which one would you pick? I'm Daniel, this means Zenof Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenof Tech, signing out. Cheers. Yeah.